Hi everybody! Today I am making a delicious and easy cake, a Starbucks S'mores Frappuccino cake. The S'mores Frappuccino flavor is my kids favorite right now, so I am making this cake just for them. Alright, let's just get right on into it. To begin, you will need a real Starbucks cup, and I have gotten the largest size of venti. And I'm cutting a slit down the side of the cup so that later on, I will have an easier time getting this cup off. Now that I've cut it, I am lightly taping it up so that the chocolate doesn't spill out. This is something I learned from a YouTube channel called How To Cake That. If you like cake tutorials, I think that you might love that channel, so go check it out. What I have here is some melted white candy melts that I'm spooning into the bottom of the cup. And then using a spoon, I am pushing the chocolate up the sides of the cup just a tad. If you look at a real s'mores frappuccino, you can see that the very bottom is white, and then there's a thin strip of dark chocolate, and then the top is a lighter brown. The sides got a little bit too messy for me, so I'm using a paper towel to clean it up. You don't want it too perfect though, a little messy is going to be more realistic. I am also using my gloved hands to smear the chocolate exactly how I want it. I have also melted a small amount of dark chocolate candy melts and I'm swirling it around in the white chocolate to make it look like it was just mixed up. And now that I'm happy with that, I am popping it into the freezer to set up. All right, the next step is to wipe dark chocolate right above the white chocolate. I want it to look slightly drizzly. Again, this does not have to be perfect. Just go all the way around the inside of the cup and clean it up, but keep it messy and drizzly looking. And then pop that into the freezer to set up again. The next layer of chocolate is a light brown shade, so I'm dropping some dark chocolate candy melts into the white, and I'm stirring those until they are melted and until I have the right shade of brown. Same thing here, just completely coat the rest of the inside of the cup. When I go to Starbucks, I actually do not get a frappuccino. That's what my kids get. I always get an Americano because I like really strong coffee. Tell me what your favorite drink from Starbucks is down in the comments. Once I have it completely coated, it goes back into the freezer to chill again. Okay, my chocolate is set up completely now, and here I'm using a knife to clean up that top edge. And now it is time for the big reveal, so I am taking off the tape and gently pulling the chocolate cup out. Look how beautiful that is. It looks so realistic, I think. Okay, the straw is up next. For this, I'm starting with a milkshake straw, and I cut it to shorten it, and then I cut a slit down the entire straw. And when I did that, it curled up just slightly, which meant that I did not need to put tape on this one. Next, I've melted some green candy melts, and I thinned those out with some Paramount crystals, and then I poured the green chocolate down into the straw. This is the messiest part. Just keep filling it until you've coated the entire inside of the straw, and then pop that into the freezer to chill. All right, here it is after I have chilled it, and I am loosening up the straw, and I am gently pulling that out. This is actually the second straw that I made. The first one broke completely, so do not be discouraged if you have to do this a couple of times. This cake most definitely needs some coffee flavoring, so next I am mixing a tablespoon of espresso powder with a half a cup of hot water, and I am mixing that up, and then I put it into the refrigerator to cool down. And while that was cooling, I made a batch of my American buttercream frosting, and I divided it into two bowls. This first bowl is my white frosting for the top of the frappuccino. It had a slight yellowish tint to it from the butter, so I added just a tiny bit of purple food color gel into the buttercream, and I mixed that up, and that really helped to whiten it up a bit. And the other half of the buttercream is getting flavored with my espresso mixture. I just poured in a little of the espresso because I didn't want the buttercream to be too thin. Both of the buttercream frostings are going into piping bags. The white icing for the top needs a star tip. And you can use any tip for the coffee buttercream. I just used a round icing tip. 
Let's move on to the most fun part, the cake layering. I have already baked a chocolate cake and I'm using a circle cutter to cut out a circle of my cake and then I push that down into the cup. And then I got my espresso mixture back out and I soaked the cake with it. And then I added a layer of my coffee buttercream frosting and then some marshmallows and then a sprinkle of crushed graham crackers. And then I repeated the same process, except this time my circle cutter that I used to cut out the cake was one size bigger. Feel free to experiment with different flavors, or you could just fill these up completely with candy. I think that would be a great gift for teenagers. For the logo, I have printed out an edible image on my edible image printer and I am brushing it with piping gel and then I am attaching it to the chocolate cup. If you do not want to invest in one of these edible image printers, you might be able to order some of these images online. And finally, I am piping the buttercream swirl on the top. Once I had it piped, I then cleaned it up just a tad around the sides and also on the top to make it more realistic. And then I am topping it off with more crushed graham crackers. One more thing, I almost forgot about the chocolate straw. I broke some of the straw off because it was slightly too tall and then I pushed it down into the buttercream. My Starbucks s'mores frappuccino cake is complete. This one looks pretty realistic to me. I think my kids are really going to love this. I would like to say that the cutting part was perfect, but it cracked when I cut it. I think next time I'll try to make the chocolate cup a little bit thinner so that it cuts better. Regardless of that, this is what it looks like on the inside. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any ideas for me, just let me know down in the comment section. I will see you all next week. Bye everybody!